Cakes that depend on egg for structure and leavening are known as foam cakes. Foam is simply a gas in liquid dispersion. When the egg is beaten until highly aerated, stable foam is produced resulting in a very light sponge cake. Because sponge cakes are firm and stable, bakeries and pastry shops prefer these cakes for decorating and soaking in simple syrup. In balancing a sponge cake formula, the three main ingredients, egg, sugar, and flour, must be in proportion. There must be sufficient sugar to tenderize and stabilize the egg. However, if there is more than 125% weight of sugar to weight of egg, the cake could collapse. The amount of liquid must be adequate to dissolve the sugar and hydrate the starch. A sifted flour is then incorporated. The objectives of mixing sponge cake are to produce a stable, fully aerated foam and to incorporate additional ingredients without losing aeration. Gently warm up the egg and sugar. These ingredients will begin to cool during whisking so they can be heated as high as 40 degrees to start. Whip the egg and sugar to a full sponge. As whole egg is whipped, small air cells form. The fat in the yolk traps this air and then protein forms a fine extensible film around each air bubble. The naturally present lecithin works to stabilize this air and fat in a liquid dispersion. As whipping is continued, these air bubbles become finer and multiply. The sponge becomes less dense, the gravity of the batter decreases, and the color changes from gold to creamy white. A fully aerated sponge will leave an impression when the whisk is slowly withdrawn. This is known as the ribbon stage. Mixing by hand, very carefully add the sifted flour and baking powder. Vigorous handling or overmixing will damage the sponge and aeration may be lost. Scale the batter, deposit and bake immediately. A hot oven is necessary to prevent drying out. Sponge layers can be baked at 205 to 210 degrees Celsius or 400 to 410 degrees Fahrenheit. To test on this, press the center of the cake to check for firmness. A correctly baked sponge cake will spring back slightly and be golden in color. To avoid dehydration and shrinkage in the tin, special care must be taken not to overbake sponge cakes. When the sponge cake has been allowed to cool slightly, one to two minutes, it is tipped out on parchment and dusted with a sugar flour mixture to keep it from sticking to the parchment when removed from the freezer. A sponge cake should be a light, delicate product with a golden brown crust. The grain is fine and the texture resilient to the touch, yet tender.